introduction. Um, so I have nothing to declare. Um, cognitive problems are um, a pro uh, co common comorbid uh, disorder in patients with epilepsy, and um, often um, uh, language is uh, impaired in these patients. And it, uh, this um, impairment has been an uh, under underestimated problem. And uh, we uh, use uh, functional MRI to investigate the uh, neuronal mechanisms underlying uh, language dysfunction. And uh, we, we use the activation maps and functional connectivity networks. So um, we included 37 patients with non symptomatic localization related epilepsy and 20 healthy controls. Those were matched for age and uh, sex. And uh, we did two assessments. One was neuropsychological assessment and one uh, functional MRI assessment. For the neuropsychological assessment, we did um, yeah, we obtained the IQ using the WISE 3 and the word fluency which, uh, for which we used a battery of tests that's uh, uh, meant to um, assess the aphasia. For fMRI we did uh, yeah, silent word generation. Um, we did those uh, fMRI measurements at uh, 3 Tesla. Uh, we obtained uh, a T1 weighted uh, image for anatomical uh, uh, information. And we did uh, functional MRI using standard uh, bold EPI sequence. And um, so the, the, all uh, subjects had to perform this uh, word generation task. And uh, this, this uh, task was extensively tested and validated outside the scanner with each patient subject. So we were sure that they were actually doing this task. So um, I already show you um, the results. We, we did, um, these are the averaged um, contrast images uh, at the left for the controls and uh, at the right for the patient group and we see all the relevant um, uh, yeah, anatomical regions that should be active during this test. Uh, however, we don't see any real difference between the controls and patients. So if you do uh, the random effects analysis in the SPM2, we didn't find any substantial significant differences. So therefore, we were interested in functional connectivity and we uh, chose to use the four main language areas, the, the anterior cingulate cortex, the medial frontal gyrus left, and the inferior frontal gyrus left and right. So we have four language areas, and then if you then look at the connections, you will have six connections. So for this analysis, um, the ROIs we uh, used, they were um, uh, drawn based on the activation maps I, I showed you earlier, and um, we also used uh, an atlas to, to make sure that, um, that the, the anatomic regions is correct. So, and then we used the uh, left and right inferior gyrus, the left medial frontal gyrus, and the um, anterior cingulate cortex. And uh, from the standard analysis where you get the contrast file, you, we obtained uh, the 200 uh, voxels within each ROI with the highest statistical t-value, and this was to exclude noise. Uh, for these 200 voxels, we uh, averaged um, yeah, the signal, so the, the bolt response, and eventually we got a vector with uh, yeah, 196 uh, data points for each person. Uh, this this um, yeah, time course signal intensity was uh, corrected for, uh, with a low-pass low, low pass filter and uh, corrected for motion. And um, eventually we, uh, we had for the four uh, regions, we did cross-correlation coefficients between these regions. And uh, finally we did uh, Fisher's head transformation to enable um, statistical uh, analysis. Uh, so the results, first uh, results from the neuropsychological data. Uh, the patients performed worse than the controls, so uh, the IQ is lower. Um, yeah, and this, this is significant. And also the, the, this specific test that uh, probes aphasia, the, the patients also did perform the worst on this. Um, then we look at the functional MRI. So as I already explained, the activation map did not really yeah, indicate any substantial difference. However, if we then look at, um, at the functional connectivity values uh, within the prefrontal cortex, then we, we obtained a significant difference so lower connectivity values for the patients. So in this map, I indicated all the values. 
So the four main regions, and then uh, in white I have the um, uh, indicated the uh, visual Z transformed correlation values for the controls, and in black the the, the values for the patients. So because of the visual Z correlation, uh, Z the transformation, the, the values can become uh, higher than one. However, if you now look at the, all the patients, they have lower values than the controls for, for all the connections. And uh, I've indicated with thick lines where, the, where this uh, was significant. And this was corrected for multiple comparison. So um, yeah, these three connections are, yeah, uh, are, are showing uh, less, less connectivity between, um, for, the, for the patients. So this is an example of the, the time course. Uh, the healthy control for the, the time course in the ACC and the inferior frontal gyrus. You can see that uh, the correlation between these regions is quite high. If you then look at the patients who is really performing bad, so th these are the low IQ and uh, low aphasia test scores, and you can see that the correlation is pretty bad. So. Um, uh, we also um, mapped, or uh, we, so on the on the x axis you have the IQ, and on the on the y axis the, the Fisher Z transformed correlation coefficient of the two regions, uh, ACC and uh, left inf inferior frontal gyrus. And then you can see that um, if if you first look at the patient, then there's a nice correlation. Is the um, the lower the IQ, the, the lower the yeah, the correlation coefficient. And uh, this, for the patient, this, this uh, relationship is uh, significant. For the, for the controls, it's not significant, but it might be due to the lower number of uh, persons. So uh, to conclude, uh, we, have, um, we have shown a relationship between a reduced functional connectivity and performance on a neuropsychological test. And uh, we did it in uh, patients with non-symptomatic uh, localization-related epilepsy. Um, we think that uh, the impaired performance of language in these patients uh, can be attributed to the loss of functional connectivity in the language networks. And um, we think that it provides a neuronal base for cognitive dysfunction and possibly cognitive decline in these patients. And uh, that's my uh, thought.